Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Real. It's Slayer Sunday, where I'll be talking about and reviewing all the episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order. Today, I'm looking at Season 2, Episode 16, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. We begin the episode with Xander showing Buffy the necklace he's bought for Cordelia, and she takes the mick, saying she's never going to stop making fun of him for dating her. Buffy says he can do better, but Xander points out that the only other person he's interested in has a demonic vampire boyfriend problem, so yeah, lay off. A vampire pops up, interrupting their chat, and after a brief scuffle, Buffy stakes him. Um, question? What's with all these oversized coats they're wearing? Oh, and into the credits we go. The next day, Cordelia is looking great, but Harmony and her gaggle of bitches shun her for dating Xander. So I guess their relationship became public at some point after all. Buffy and Willow meet up with Amy in class, who asks if they're going to the Valentine's dance. I'm gonna say straight up that Valentine's Day can kiss my ass sideways. Willow excitedly blurts out, My boyfriend's in the van. And Buffy explains she won't be going due to a bad breakup. On her way out of class, Amy Jedi mind tricks the teacher into thinking she's handed in her homework, which Xander and his giant shirt witnesses. Seriously, dude, get clothes that fit. Buffy tells Willow she'll be spending Valentine's Day with Joyce, and Xander tells them what he just saw. Giles rocks up in time to awkwardly run into Jenny, and again, what is with all the weird posters in this school? If fourth hour English seems endless, try sitting here for 50 years? That doesn't even make sense, what does that even mean? If you don't go to English class, you'll lose the ability to walk? Or the teachers have been here so long, they're all in wheelchairs. I couldn't make out the text on the bottom, so I googled it, and it's actually a drink driving poster. But it still makes no sense. What is fourth hour English? Four hours of English, or English on the fourth hour? I don't know. I'm getting hella sidetracked. Anyway, Giles doesn't want to talk to Jenny right now, and goes off with Buffy. She asks Giles if he's okay, but he's more concerned about her because his research has turned up that Angel, in his soulless state, tends to get extra murdery and mamey around Valentine's Day. I know that feeling. Wait, what? He tells her to stay home for the next few nights while he patrols, but last time he patrolled, he got shot in the butt. Spike, whose burns are starting to heal, has bought Drusilla a necklace that she loves, until Angel presents her with a heart and mocks Spike's efforts. Angel can't decide what to do for Buffy for Valentine's Day, so Spike suggests he rips her lungs out. Yep, that would certainly send a message. Dingoes is playing at the bronze, and Willow is having a great time, but Xander is nervously waiting for Cordelia, who shows up only for her asshole friends to ignore her. Buffy and Joyce are chilling on the sofa when there's a knock at the door, which Buffy goes to answer. There's no one there, and when she gets back, Joyce has vanished, although not really because jump scare Joyce comes with a present. Buffy opens it, only to find several red roses and a note saying, Soon. The same message Sarah Michelle Gellar's character received on her mirror in I Know What You Did Last Summer. Buffy doesn't like her gift. Xander goes to speak to Cordelia and babbles incoherently before giving her the necklace, which she loves and immediately breaks up with him. She says they're just not a good fit and he yells at her for choosing Valentine's Day of all days to break up with him. The next day in school, the students make fun of Xander and laugh at him for being dumped. Harmony makes a cruel comment while Cordelia just sits there, so he runs off to grab Amy and points out she's a witch. She tries to deny it, but Xander says he saw what happened before and threatens her. Blackmail is such an ugly word. I didn't say blackmail. Yeah, but I'm about to blackmail you, so I thought I'd bring it up. Amy asks what he wants, and he says he wants to be respected and needs magic to make that happen. Amy says love spells are hard and wonders what his motives are. Xander explains that he wants Cordelia to love him so desperately that she can't think straight so he can dump her as payback. And that is both a fantastically shitty plan and also accurate teenage behaviour, so I'm torn. Amy agrees to help and asks Xander to get a personal item of Cordelia's. Buffy marches into the library and shoves her note at Giles and tells him to stop holding out on her. But whatever, Buffy, can we talk about this look? Because I'm head to toe loving it. Xander chases down Cordelia and demands the necklace back, so she calls him pathetic and says it's in her locker. But when she goes to get it, she actually pulls it from around her neck, which is kind of adorable. That night at school, all the shit is able to go on without anyone seeing it. Not Buffy or Giles, who usually work late, the security guard who probably quit after bad eggs, or no end of vampires who must be roaming the place because it's never fucking locked. 
Sorry, anyway. The spell goes that Cordelia won't be able to rest or sleep, which sounds uncomfortable. And next day in school, Xander struts up to her in his questionable fashion choices. He hovers over her like a stalker and she tells him to get lost and he retreats to the library defeated. Buffy comforts him by making plans with him and then starts to come on to him, but Amy bursts in needing to talk to him. She says the spell didn't work properly and they could try again, but Xander says not to worry. But then Amy says exactly the same thing Buffy said and Xander realises that he screwed up big time. When a third woman with super 90s hair comes onto him, he runs home only to find Willow in his bed and of course she comes onto him too. Xander reminds her about Oz but she doesn't care and Xander does the only thing he can do. He runs away. Cordelia is once again shunned by the bitch brigade who chastise her for breaking up with Xander which confuses the hell out of her and Xander goes back to school where all the girls perv on him, so he goes to Giles for help. He explains what happened and Jenny bursts in, touching up Xander as she tries to apologise to Giles for lying to him. Giles yells at Xander for being so dumb, tells him to wait in the library while he goes to find Amy, and drags Jenny off with him. Xander tries to barricade one of the doors, but does a piss poor job of it and Buffy walks in, all ready to seduce him. He turns down her advances and she gets psychotically mad at him. Uh, now would be a good time to run away. But Amy creeps in and the two girls get into a fight where Amy turns Buffy into a rat. Then Amy and Jenny get into it before the bitch Katia start attacking Cordelia. Xander and Giles try to catch Buffy but then Oz out of nowhere punches Xander in the face and she gets away. Oz explains that Willow was on the phone to him all night crying over Xander so he wanted to defend her but helps Xander to his feet. Giles sends Xander home while he works on breaking the spell and recruits Oz to track down Buffy, so Xander skulks away. He rushes to save Cordelia and carries her away, but runs into trouble outside, led by an axe-wielding willow. Oh, bugger. I'd rather see you dead than with that bitch! A fight breaks out while Oz tracks Buffy into the basement, which has a cat in it for some reason, and suddenly it's pitch black and no seriously, how long have they been running for? They take refuge at Buffy's house where Joyce sends Cordelia away and comes onto Xander, until Cordy yeets her out of the house and demands answers. Joyce tries to get back in so they hide in Buffy's room, except Angel grabs Xander and drags him out of the window. Xander tries to fight him off, but Angel of course is too strong for him, but Drusilla intervenes, also affected by Amy's spell. Her and Angel have a standoff, which Angel backs away from and Drusilla goes to sire Xander, but the mob catches up so Cordelia drags him back into the house, only to find Joyce wielding a knife. The pair hide in the basement and we see the first look at Xander's flair for carpentry as he barricades the door. They get into an argument where Xander admits that the spell was meant for her and Cordelia is touched until a knife comes through the door. Giles forces Amy to reverse the rat spell as the mob closes in and just as they're overwhelmed, Giles breaks the love curse which confuses everyone as they don't know what just happened. Buffy pops up naked in front of Oz. I seem to be having a slight case of nudity here. But you're not a rat. So call it an upside. And he kindly goes off to get her some clothes. Cordelia passes off the basement gathering as a scavenger hunt and Xander reveals to Buffy the next day that Willow won't talk to him. Buffy says it's harder for her because she actually loves him and thanks Xander for not taking advantage of her. When Harmony is a bitch to Xander, Cordelia tells her off and the two rekindle their romance and go off arm in arm. Okay, so I'm not a fan of this episode, but actually I enjoyed the first 20 minutes because it's an insight into the minefield that is popularity and dating. As you know, I'm not a Xander fan, so I'm always going to err on the side of meh when it comes to episodes about him. But outside of the spell, this is kind of more of an episode about Cordelia, which I don't mind now that her character isn't completely obnoxious. The spell and its effects I found quite annoying, but there were a few moments of subtlety that I found interesting. First of all, I love the combination of Buffy and Oz, which rarely occurs, but their scene together is definitely the highlight of the episode. Cordelia and Xander have to hide from a threat in Buffy's basement, which is what happened to start their relationship in the first place. And this is now the second episode in a row where Big Bad Angel has backed down from a standoff. In this episode, it's against Drusilla, and in the previous episode, it's against Oz, which I find really telling, especially for a creature with supposedly no humanity in him. We've got one death for our list, a single vampire staked by Buffy, which brings our running total to 13 humans, 4 transformations, 28 vampires, 1 zombie, 1 mummy, 
three demons, and one monster. So there you have it. That was Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot. Or consider subscribing if you want more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon, and don't let the vampires bite.